take that in a moment together. My friend Stan used to say that there are ten laws for raising children. And then after he had children, he said that there are really ten suggestions for raising children. And then a few more years went by and the children became teenagers. And he came to the conclusion that there are really ten hints for raising children. On Mother's Day, people spend billions and billions and billions of dollars, over $10.5 billion on mom. But on dad, not so much. Dads just can't seem to get a fair shake. Paul Harvey defined a father like this. A father is forced to endure childbirth without an anesthetic. And a father is never quite the hero his daughter thinks he is, and never quite the man his son believes him to be. So dads work hard to smooth out the rough places in the road for those who will follow him. Fathers are the ones who give daughters away to other men who aren't nearly good enough, so they can have grandchildren who are smarter than anybody else's. Father's Day seems to be a day set aside to someone's attempt to give dads equal time. It was done with the right heart, but it has never really had the impact that Mother's Day has enjoyed. The definition of a father is a man who carries pictures of his family in his wallet where his money used to be. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, or to women, it's national elbow your husband in the ribs during the sermon day. Today is the day that we honor our fathers and our grandfathers, the uncles and all the men who have filled important roles in the lives of our family and of our church. In scripture, in scripture, we are commanded to honor our fathers and mothers. So let's turn to the scriptures, shall we? Exodus 20, verse 12. Page 60. If you'd read it with me, please. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. We want you to know, men, how important you are to us. We want you to realize and recognize how much you teach us more than you probably ever know. On live TV shows and sporting events, have you noticed that everyone who is gathered around, they've got these signs that say, Hi, Mom! Or you can hear the athletes being interviewed saying, Hey, Mom, I love you. Dads, you're important, but I guess you just don't get that recognition. Chuck Colson, who founded Prison Fellowship Ministry, noticed that on Mother's Day, they always give out more cards than they do on Father's Day. That it seems as though in one large prison in California on Mother's Day, they gave out a thousand cards for the inmates to send to their mothers. And at the same prison, the very same prison, on Father's Day, only six inmates asked for cards to send to their fathers. Whether you are a father or whether you are celebrating the life or the memory of your father this morning, know that regardless of whether you have or have a great father, remember that God, the Creator, your Heavenly Father, will never let you down. Our Heavenly Father loves us, instructs us, provides for us, protects us, encourages us, forgives us, cares and blesses us. Where our parents might fall short, we see that our Heavenly Father steps in to be what our parents might not be able to be. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. It has been said that being a dad is not easy. It seems as though dads spend the first couple of years encouraging the children to walk and to talk, and in the rest of the life, telling them to sit down and be quiet. If you look up father in the dictionary, you will see that it comes right before the word fatigued. You may not see it, but a father is more influential in the development of a child. 
child's life than any other factor. And the older the children become, the more they appreciate you, dads. Mark Twain once said that when he was 14, his father was not too smart, and he could hardly stand to be around him. But when he turned 21, he was amazed and astonished at how much his dad had learned in seven years. <laughs> Someone once wrote, the world according to dad, words that most dads have said at some time or another to their children. See if these ring a bell. Words like, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Bring back all the change. How should I know? Ask your mother. I'm not made out of money. I wasn't asleep. I was resting my eyes. <laughs> Be quiet. Can't you see I'm trying to think? George was the father of three small, active boys. And one summer they were all out in the yard and they were playing superheroes. And George was the villain. The boys ganged up and they tackled George to the ground. And George didn't get up right away. And a neighbor ran over to see if George was okay. And George opened one eye and said, Shh, don't give me away. This is the only chance I've had to rest all day. <laughs> you don't have to be a superman to be a super dad. You don't have to fit a certain mold or have nerves of steel or the ability to always say and do the right thing in every situation to be a great dad. Most dads have a career to think about, cars to work on, gutters to clean, lawns to be mowed, ballet recitals and concerts to attend, parent-teacher conferences to attend, ball games to watch, and the list just goes on and on and on. 82% of full-time working men say that they would like to spend more time with their family. Father's Day is a time to celebrate the huge contribution made to family life by our dads. It's a special time of the year, a special moment, to say thank you for all the sacrifices made, for the hard work, for the long hours of parenthood, freely given but rarely acknowledged. It's an opportunity to salute the simple, quiet nobility of being a father. Fatherhood is getting up in the middle of the night to see what the noise was outside when you'd really rather stay in bed and hide like everybody else. Fatherhood is the best excuse in the world to, to buy all those toys that you wanted as a child and never got. Fatherhood is carrying sleeping children into the house when you're really too tired to even carry yourself in. Fatherhood is a thankless job of fixing kites, breaking up fights, wiping up chocolate milk, trying to fix the sink before realizing you really do need to call the plumber, and opening the jar of pickles when no one else can. Have you found the perfect Father's Day gift yet? In fact, it's the same gift that I recommend for Mother's Day. It's nestled after that command to remember the Sabbath. We find this fifth commandment, honor your father and mother. Honor means to regard with great respect, to, with esteem, and to give recognition. The fact that God even added honor your father to the Ten Commandments should tell us how important it is. There are lots of things that you could give your dad on Father's Day. The traditional tie. Maybe the fishing rod and reel. A bowling ball. A new shirt. But the best gift to give is to honor him. Some of us had good fathers. Some bad. Some absent. Or some geographically close but emotionally distant. We think back to how our fathers treated us when we were young, how involved they were in our lives. Were they kind? Were they gentle? Were they understanding? Were they patient? Did they love God? Did they show us that Sunday morning was a priority to attend worship and to honor God, our Heavenly Father? Psalm 139 makes the point that God, our Heavenly Father, is supportive, fair, engaged, and patient. Moreover, throughout the passage of time, God has said over and over and over and over again, I love you, I love you, I love you. My dad didn't always say, I love you. I would say to my daddy, I love you, and he'd say, ditto, right back at you. <laughs> the term father is used to describe God 266 times in the Bible. The word father itself is used 352 times in the New Testament. It's a 
title that honors God. God leaves us the best example and model for fatherhood. By understanding the legacy that he leaves us, we can be better equipped to pass that legacy on to our children. See what great love the Father has for us, that he would call us his children. Our relationships, like father-child relationship, are a reflection of the relationship that we share with God. We model our relationship after Jesus' relationship with his Father. The Bible has hundreds of references to Christian parenting and numerous examples of fathers, good and bad, that can give us insight to the heart and intention of God's precepts for parenting. But it's impossible to ignore the admonition of Jesus when he says, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Jesus commands us to have perfect intention to guide the hearer into seeking the completeness found in the way of God, to be guided and to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. 90% of dads say becoming a father made them want to be a better person and a better role model for their children. And 75% felt a weight of responsibility that they didn't have before. So what does a perfect Christian father look like? According to the Apostle Paul, fathers do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Dads are like, well, Andy Cloy, dads are like packages of whispers because they remind us that as life happens and gets all twisted up, we have to be flexible. Life happens and it throws us all kinds of curves and twists and you have to have some flexibility or else you'll snap. Dads are like Milky Way. Milky Way candy bars. They remind us that our future is out there. That the universe is ours to explore. Keeping in mind that God is the creator of the universe. Some of you are fathers. Some of you are married to fathers. And all of us have had a father. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land your God is giving you. The issue of giving due honor to parents is a big deal as far as God is concerned. Parents are usually the first representatives of God that we encounter in life. Our response is to set the time for the attitudes that we develop towards God. God himself sets the example. Psalm 103, 13 says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. God is the perfect example, sensitive to our struggles and tender in his compassion towards us. We see the tender side of the father in the prodigal son. Both his sons were prodigal in their own way, but the father never rejects either of them. The story really is more about the heart of the father rather than the foolishness of the son. And so it is with God and us. Three-year-old Sally was having trouble sleeping through the night, and so she would wake up several times in the night because she was afraid. And each time her father would tuck her back into bed and remind her that God was with her and God would keep her safe. And after several nights of this behavior, Sally's dad asked her if she prayed to God to take away her fear so that she might sleep. Oh, yes, she assured him. I prayed really hard to God, and he told me to come and get you. <laughs> God is the father who's always home. He is the father who will always protect us. God is revealed to us through many names or titles, each revealing a different aspect of his nature. In creation, in creation, he is Elohim, the faithful, powerful God. In the Garden of Eden, he is Jehovah Elohim, Lord God, who is eternally holy. To Abraham, God is the great I Am. Our relationship with God as our Father is a personal relationship. We are all adopted into the family of God. It's a profound relationship. The Jews had dozens of names for God, whatever they needed at a given time. If they were anxious, they would call on Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is our peace. If they were sick, they would call on Jehovah Rapha, the Lord is our healer. And when 
when Jesus spoke the word Father in Aramaic, he used Abba, Daddy. We have a personal relationship with God, for when God adopts us into his family, he didn't do it just for a little bit. He did it for all eternity. Adoption in biblical times could not be undone. The love that God has for us, for each of us, is extremely extravagant. God reveals his love to us by sending his son, his only son, Christ Jesus, into the world for each and every one of us. It is our choice to respond to that love. We are free to receive it. We are free to return it. And we are free to share it. Now, that's a Father's Day message for all. Amen and amen.